thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Renee Pizzaturo, and I'm the Marketing and Business Development Specialist um, with Unilink. And we're excited to have you here with us for our webinar entitled, Discover the Benefits of Cash Automation Solutions. Joining me um, is Unilink Sales Consultant, Steve Bushner. I'm going to pass off the presentation to him shortly, and he's going to give you a brief introduction about Unilink and what we do. Then after, we have our special guest, Jeff Hauser, who's with Smart Cash Product Management at Burroughs Payment. And at the end, raffling off a Starbucks and Target gift card to an attendee who stays with us at the end. Um, and then finally, we're going to address some questions, which I'm sure you may have. Um, so feel free as we go along to type into the chat box that's provided in the GoToMeeting. And we're going to answer a few at the end. And depending on time, um, we will be sure to address all questions you'll have on an individual basis. So now I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Steve. Thanks, Renee. Once again, we want to welcome all of you on the call, including those that are just joining us. And for those who are not familiar with Unilink, Unilink's been around for over 26 years, starting with no customers, and now we're recognized as one of the leaders in the industry servicing over 2,000 financial institutions across the country. Our strengths and success come from our company's commitment to provide excellent service and support to our customers at a competitive price, and unlike much of our competition, we offer the most complete tabletop offering in the industry, which includes our ability to provide supplies and repairs when needed to help our customers maintain their hardware. Many of the customers, like some on this call, love the fact that we are a one-stop shop for all of their tabletop needs. And today, of course, as you all know, we want to highlight one of those product offerings and talk about the benefits of cash automated solutions. So I'd like to introduce now Jeff Hauser from Burroughs, who is a Smart Cash Program Management Specialist. Jeff, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, sir, and welcome, everybody. Appreciate the time. Renee, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. And one more, please. I thought I'd start by sharing about Burroughs as an organization. We've been partners for Unilink with, uh, uh, or with Unilink for quite some time. And Burroughs as an organization <clears throat> and as a value-added partner for Unilink has had a long history in both the payment industry and the services industry. Uh, today our world headquarters is located in Plymouth, Michigan. And while we have a supply chain and a reach into approximately 55 countries, we're very much U.S.-centric in terms of our business. Uh, additionally, for the last 30, 35 years, we've focused almost entirely on the community bank and credit union space, and we've, we've really developed an expertise or a specialty related to all payment technology, both from a manufacturing and a hardware perspective, a software perspective, and, and an ongoing support or maintenance perspective as well. Uh, today, it, we run a, a majority of our business out of that facility in Plymouth in conjunction with a call center in Portland, Oregon, and an operations center in Houston, Texas. We've got over 300 technicians in the field, and really the value that Burroughs and Unilink bring together as a partnership, as Steve mentioned, is, is really it's the opportunity for us to deliver best of breed technology that with a, a, a wide breadth of, of both product and services offerings to the community bank and credit union space. Renee, can you go to the next slide, please? This gives you a feel for some of our worldwide clients. As I mentioned, we've got a, a pretty significant reach, uh, but again, we're, we're very much focused on the community bank and credit union space here in the United States. If you go to the next slide, you will see uh, just a brief overview of what, what we do from a customer services perspective. Because we've got such a wide breadth of, of product offerings, we've got a complementary set of services that we think are, are truly second to none, from on-site break-fix maintenance support to uh, the, the depot repair services offered both by Burroughs and Unilink and the professional services. You know, we recognize that the implementation of technology isn't dependent solely upon the hardware or even the hardware and software, that ongoing support and the appropriate upfront planning relative to implementation have, plays a, a critical role in seeing the return on investment that you expect from the technology that you purchase from Unilink and Burroughs. If you go to the next slide, you'll see 
<clears throat> a bit uh, an overview again of, of some of our product capabilities. We've got from ATM hardware to telecash automation, which is the focus of the presentation today. We've got a long history in the check and document scanner space, and we offer a variety of both retail and financial solutions relative to device monitoring, software integration. Really our focus and where, where Unilink and Burroughs as a partnership adds value uh, to the folks on this call is we focus deeply on, on integration, on ensuring that the technology that you implement is implemented seamlessly. It functions the way you'd expect without, with minimal to no disruption of your current business process. And we'll talk a bit more about that as we continue. Go to the next slide, please. At the end of the day, one of our primary advantages, as I mentioned just a moment ago, is our coverage. We've got, as I said, 300 technicians across the country. They're trained on a variety of technology platforms. And because we've grown up in, in the world of mission critical hardware service, uh, we're well positioned to ensure that the technology that you purchase from Unilink and Burroughs is truly available 24-7. It, we, we ensure that the right parts are in the right place, the right people with the right skills are available to go on site, and as a result, we offer two to four hour response coverage in over 110 major metropolitan areas, and we provide remote support 24-7, 365 from our call centers in Plymouth, Michigan, and Portland, Oregon. You go to the next slide. The focus of today's call is on telecash automation, and truly what the benefits of teleca telecash automation are for the retail branch. Now, over the last few years, the, the narrative around telecash automation has truly changed. If you talk to Burroughs five, six, seven years ago, we would have focused very heavily on feeds and speeds. We would have talked about cassette capacity. We would have talked about the way that the device accepts notes, dispenses notes. And today, I think the business case has really been proven, or, or the functionality of the device is very familiar and probably familiar to those of you on this call. Uh, what's really driving the adoption of telecash automation, and we're seeing an, a, an incredible spike in the number of units being installed and the no number of branches being transformed as a result of this technology, there, there are really two key focuses. There's the obvious hard dollar savings, which is in lowering costs. You can reduce your branch cash inventory, which is a non-performing asset that's costly to manage and costly to secure. You can dramatically reduce training lead time, so the amount of time spent training a new teller is really cut significantly as the result of leveraging some technology that improves accuracy and makes the counting and the, and the accounting process easier. As a result of, of increased accuracy, you see a, a positive benefit to retention. And you're also able to design smaller branches. You know, gone are the days of, of 10,000 square foot, 5,000 square foot brick and mortar locations. And we're seeing a migration towards lower cost properties that have multifunction employees doing a wide variety of different transactions in those branches. And in addition to the hard dollar savings on lower cost, there's an opportunity to increase revenue. And what I mean by that is there's a very real opportunity. Now, it's not a guarantee. I, I, I like to point that out. It's, it's, in adopting teller cash recyclers will not help you sell more products. It will create room for you to coach the sale of new products, which is, which is critically important. This is truly, it's an opportunity for, for banks and credit unions across the country to change the way that they do business at the branch level. They can promote a more customer and sales friendly branch design, and they can begin to weight their branch staff more towards sales and relationship management and the deepening of relationships as they move forward. So these are the things in the marketplace that are truly driving enhanced adoption. The reason we're seeing an increase in the number of units being installed, the reason we're seeing these changes at the retail branch level are truly uh, a variety of different organizations trying to capitalize on these benefits that you see here. Next slide, please. Uh, right now, I'd like to take a look at a few of the trends and the market conditions, you know, dig a little bit deeper into the underpinnings of these benefits. If you go to the next slide, one of the things that still remains uh, relative to the retail bank, despite all these incredible channels that we're seeing, we're seeing full function ATMs as, a, as an impressive delivery channel. Mobile banking is, is absolutely unavoidable as a channel. Uh, but, but the fact still remains that over 90% of all new accounts are still generated at the branch. 
the DDA remains the primary acquisition tool for retail banking, and it's still done nine out of 10 times at the branch level. That's critically important. It means despite the fact that these other channels are gaining adoption, gaining market share, and despite the fact that you've got uh, uh, an, an increased number of folks migrating away from the branch, a majority of your new business acquisition is still done face-to-face, -face, which means there really needs to be a robust strategy within the retail bank to ensure that you're capitalizing on these visits that are becoming less and less frequent. You, you have fewer opportunities, so the need to capitalize on those face-to-face -face opportunities continues to increase. Can you go to the next slide, Renee? Another critical element is the changing role of the teller. Uh, as I said before, the, the look and feel of branches in cha is changing, but, but believe it or not, the number of branches is still growing despite consolidation, despite certain geographies perhaps losing branches. All in all, we're still seeing an uptick in the number of branches being opened across the country. And those branches look, act, and feel different than, than perhaps they did in the past. And when I say the, the role of the teller is changing, that's, it, it harkens back to my, my statement earlier. We're beginning to see less of a focus on transaction management and more of a focus on customer relationship management. And to bridge that gap, to go from uh, being a transaction manager to being somebody who has the opportunity to, to create a stickier relationship, to, to build a deeper relationship with customers, you need to have a different profile of teller. You really need to go from teller to more of a universal banker type model. And, and it, that means having an individual who has the ability to process teller transactions without a doubt, but also who's got a mind for selling those additional products, those products that, that encourage retention. Because we know as, as bankers at the end of the day, it's far easier to retain the business you have. It's far more economical to retain the business you have than to go out and have to acquire new business because of attrition. Next slide, please. And as I mentioned previously, branch design is a big driver of this. You know, the ability to eliminate not just the size of the branch or maybe the, the, the high cost walk-in vault in the back room, but the ability to adopt a branch design that encourages, that actually creates an environment that's conducive for discussion, that's conducive for cross-selling. You remove the barriers and you create an open atmosphere where dialogue is encouraged rather than simply queuing behind a traditional teller line and processing transactions one after another. Uh, so the change in branch design, the change in philosophy. Now this doesn't always mean, uh, you know, five or six years ago, we, everybody would tell you the teller line is dead and it's time to go back to, or it's time to adopt an open branch concept. And I think today we're seeing a kind of a hybrid of both. There are certainly geographies or, or, or areas that serve a particular demographic where a teller line is important. It's traditional and that, that really looks for that. Uh, and there are certainly, you know, you, you head down to, to downtown San Francisco or you head to downtown New York and there's a, there's a set there that works very well with an open branch design and there are a variety of markets that fall somewhere in between. So really, w when I say changing branch design, teller cash automation doesn't mean you have to go to an open branch concept. It doesn't mean you have to get rid of the teller line. What it does is it creates an opportunity for you to determine based on what would work best for your particular demographic, what type of branch look and feel you'd like to create. So really it's, it's creating an opportunity for you to rethink the way that you connect with your customers at the retail level without compromising efficiency, without requiring a, a number of additional full-time employees, and without creating any risk relative to cash security, which is a really nice benefit. Go to the next slide, Renee. This is part and parcel to the new branch delivery strategy discussion. But the, the ability to not only change the look and feel of the branch, but also the location of the branch is incredibly important. We're seeing a tendency when, when organizations leverage teller cash recycling or teller cash dispensing, the ability to securely dispense cash in a much smaller footprint, in a secure footprint, we're seeing them, them branch out into areas and, and really work on meeting customers where they're at. So again, the ability to go out and staff new branches, to locate these in areas that traditionally they may not have been, whether that's in store or on site at a corporate location, or if it's in a, a strip mall or a high traffic area where, where the traditional 
brick and mortar branch may not necessarily have been placed. You, you create opportunity or flexibility by leveraging this technology to change the way that you go to market with your customer. Let's take a look specifically at why banks are adopting smart cash solutions. If you go to the next, next slide, and one more please. At the end of the day, the underpinning uh, of teller cash automation is to really increase teller productivity. So all in all, teller, teller efficiency has increased by up to 35%. Over the last five or six years, we've done a lot to really study these, these time motion benefits. And essentially, two tellers can be as productive as three. Cash in transaction time is reduced in half, is cut in half, and cash out transaction time is reduced by 30%. Now, an additional area within the retail bank that, that really gains benefit is vault tellering. Because you've now stored cash centrally, because you've got an electronic journal of all transactions that go in and out, you're able to eliminate the dual control process relative to vault buys and sells. So even if you've got one or two devices and you have five, six, seven, eight teller windows, you've got the ability now without having to take two people off the teller line due to dual control requirements and count cash in the back room, not once, but twice. You've got the ability to keep your windows open as long as you need and to access vault cash without the need to go through cumbersome, time-consuming audits or time-consuming double counts. So it's really a great way to ensure that you've increased teller productivity. The next benefit is, is truly better, better managed cash inventory. The 45% number is a number that we've played with over the last five or six years, and, and it's really astonishing. One of the real detriments to the way that cash is handled today is when, when individual teller cash drawers, which are under sole control for the purpose of accountability, uh, are leveraged across the branch footprint, many times it's tough to get a denominational outlook. How much, not, not, not what the total of those those branch drawers are, but what is the denomin denominational makeup? If you've got $10,000, is that 10,000 in hundreds? Is, uh, how much of that is ones? How, many, how much of that is stored in fives or tens? And by storing branch cash centrally, you've got the ability to make smarter decisions relative to your denominational positions. Too often we find that branch managers or assistant branch managers, the individuals responsible for ordering cash, do a very understandable thing. They order more ones or more fives or more tens than perhaps they need because at the end of the day, there's nothing more embarrassing than being a retail bank that runs out of cash to give their customers. What this does is this allows you to understand the branch-wide denominational position so that you can order the right denominations and the right totals. What you've done then is you've taken, as we said before, a non-performing asset that's costly to handle, that's costly to secure, that represents real risk, and you've pulled some of that out of your out of your branch network. On average, we've seen anywhere from 30 to 60 percent. 45 percent tends to be a, a very solid number. We can help you take 45,000 of every 100,000 you store at the branch and eliminate that from your total inventory. As you mentioned before, cross-selling is another benefit of teller cash automation. If you want to go to the next slide, Renee. productivity gains, we know that you can reallocate up to 50% of a teller's time to sales behaviors and activity. Now, again, as I mentioned before, this doesn't mean these products sell, sell themselves as a result of the technology. Rather, it creates the opportunity to coach a new set of behaviors. Now, where we've seen this most effective isn't going from zero to 100 miles an hour. In other words, you don't go from managing teller transactions on Monday to selling loans and investment accounts on Tuesday. But what we've discovered is when banks, take a, banks and credit unions take a, a, a very pragmatic approach to cross-selling, when they identify the few products that create a stickier relationship, that open the avenue for a longer-term relationship, and thereby in the future, or potentially in the future, a conversation on those higher spread products, the loan products, the investment products, by focusing on things like online bill pay, by focusing on things like online banking, uh, you have the opportunity to encourage tellers, to encourage universal bankers to spend less of their time managing the transaction, more of their time encouraging folks to use those services that make the difference when it comes to retention. It, additionally, we find that the relationship value, you know, at the end of the day, the community bank and credit union space 
competes with the large national accounts by offering a differentiated service, a superior service, a community-based, community-focused service to their customers. And what you've done, what you do by installing this technology, by leveraging cash automation, is you take the transactional nature of that role and you relegate that. You allow these folks to begin to meet their customers, make better eye contact, develop deeper relationships, and they really engender your brand. They become your brand to the end user. So creating room for more meaningful relationships, offering the opportunity for differentiated service is a real critical factor and a real, very real benefit for Teller Cash Automation. Last and certainly but not least, uh, accuracy, training, and retention are, are very real benefits. And we, we touched on this briefly previously, but the ability to virtually eliminate teller balancing time is a very real savings. At the end of day, rather than having your folks on the clock for 15, 20, and in cases where they may not have reconciled 30, 40, or 60 minutes, you've got the ability to balance at the end of day in five minutes or less. You can take true labor off of the clock. Uh, you can also significantly simplify teller training, as I mentioned. You know, what, what formerly may take a week of, of classroom training and a week of, of on-site shadowing or a few days in a classroom and a few days of shadowing can be cut in half. You've, you can count on the accuracy of the device and thereby improve teller retention. Because we know one of the primary reasons why tellers are let go is the stress of managing large quantities and or errors or mistakes made in the process of, of teller transactions, imp simplifying or reducing the, the amount of focus spent on accuracy both creates a better working environment for the teller and also improves retention from a policy and an accuracy perspective. So these are the things that, that we see underpinning those benefits that we talked about earlier, the things that help you drive increased revenue and realize lower cost are all of these details that, that we just discussed. So if you go to the next slide, we begin to look at the actual product. Unilink and Burroughs offers one of the most robust product lines in the market. We've got everything from compact currency recyclers that are about the size of a two-drawer file cabinet and can fit underneath a desk, ideal for open branch designs or, say, private banking or, or high-wealth high banking where you, where you tend to do some teller transactions in a closed office and accompany that transaction with an account review or something deeper than that. And then you've also got the dual delivery currency recycler. It's, it's unique in the market. Its ergonomic design is ideal for high volume branches, branches where you've got a high volume of cash being distributed day in and day out. You've got the smart cash currency dispenser. It's got the highest capacity in the market, uh, 18,000 notes and six cassettes. And it operates as one of the quiet device, quietest devices available today. Uh, and last but certainly not least, you've got the smart cash coin dispenser, which pairs with any of these units and allows you not only to automate the dispensing of cash, but also the dispensing of coin. So what we'll do now is take a little bit deeper dive into the individual product sets. And we'll start with the smart cash dual delivery currency recycler. As I mentioned before, it's ideal for high volume locations, and its note capacity is, is perfect for high volume branches. Now, if, if you know anything about some of the competitive devices out there, you know that there are devices with more than 6,000 notes. For me, I, I always like to remind people that the point of cash recycling isn't to see how many notes you can get in the machine. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The real benefit or the real value of cash recycling is to help you reduce the amount of cash on hand, is to more effectively use the cash that you truly need. And if you see this picture on the, on the top right there with the device opened, we talk about not just overall capacity, but functional capacity. The dual delivery recycler has two types of cassettes. The top four cassettes you see there picture are what we call high capacity cassettes. They carry 1,000 notes. The bottom four cassettes are standard cassettes, and they carry about 500 notes. The reason for this is, is pretty simple. We focus on functional capacity, and we know that you're not going to use hundreds and fifties the same ways that you use ones or twenties. Or for that matter, there are branches that perhaps use hundreds at a higher, higher volume than they do fives and tens. No two branches are alike. And what we've done is we've allowed with eight cassette positions of differing size, we've allowed end users to customize the way that they configure the device to ensure that they've got enough room 
for their highest volume notes without taking a whole lot of space for their low volume notes. If you've got six or seven positions of uniform size, we know at the end of the day that it's great to have a, a, a large capacity machine, but if you've allocated a cassette position that may hold 1,500 or 2,000 notes to hundreds, you've left a lot of unused real estate in that machine. You've created a device with too large a footprint, and you've created the opportunity to store more cash than you need. The next device is the Smart Cash Compact Currency Recycler. As I mentioned just a moment ago, it's really an ideal uh, solution for an open branch. It's great for micro branches, for branches that are, that are in corporate locations or in store locations. And it's really great for under counter or at a desk type implementations. It's the smallest recycler on the market. It holds about 4,000 notes. And it uses many of the same components as the dual delivery recycler. So from a service and ease of use perspective, those similarities are real benefits, not only from a, from a like I said, a service perspective for, the, for Burroughs and Unilink when they provide that on-site support, but also for your end users, for the tellers that have to potentially migrate between branches or migrate between units within a branch. Uh, that redundancy is a real benefit and one that we've, we've seen a lot of customers realize throughout the years. The next device is the Smart Cash High Capacity Currency Dispenser. As I mentioned before, this is the largest capacity dispenser in the market. Each one of those cassettes that you see there, each, each of those six positions, offers a 3,000 note capacity. In the case of dispensers, uh, they've been around for a while. And where we see dispensers used most often is in drive throughs in areas where both equipment limitations when you, relative to pneumatic drive through tubes and the weight that they can pull through the tubes, and policy has really limited the amount of cash that comes into the branch or in through the drive through it's really an ideal place for a lower cost, high function dispenser that you, you tend to give more cash out. And so we see this as a great complement to the Smart Cash suite of products. And it's most often leveraged in that drive through type location. Again, high security, 24 hour, UL, 24 hour monitoring capabilities. It can be alarmed, it can be monitored for seismic, for uh, door alarms, and it's UL291 certified, just like the compact and the dual delivery recycler as well. So when it comes to this hardware, if you go to the next slide, Renee, the real benefits, and, and we've, we've talked over these, you've got the opportunity for alternative staffing models. You can look at FTE reduction as a result of productivity, or in many cases, rather than talking about cutting heads, you, you can begin to limit or, or reduce the number of open requisitions, perhaps, that you have for, for tellers currently. Uh, you're going to have the opportunity to improve the, the, both the value of the products you sell and the retention that you realize as a result of deepening that relationship, as a result of offering a differentiated customer experience in the branch. You've got the option to reduce training costs and increase teller retention, the cost of, of retention. And you create, at the end of the day, a safer, more secure branch environment with the flexibility to change the way that business is done at the branch level. The last thing I'd like to talk about today uh, before we open up for, for questions is, is really where we think Unilink and Burroughs stands apart from the competition. It's in the integration. Uh, there are a variety of different options in the market. We happen to think we've got the best. But we go a step beyond that. Where we truly add value is in the integration. Where the rubber meets the road is how seamless these devices can be implemented. Does this dr dramatically change the way that the teller application and the teller interacts today? Or, or can it be done in a way that is seamless to the end user? And what Burroughs, much like the flexibility or the breadth of our hardware offering, we offer a very similar flexibility relative to interface. So there's three basic terms that we use here, and they can be, they can be used differently in other places, so I'll, I'll help you define them. We've got three options, standalone, interface, and integrated. When I say standalone, that means there's no connection to the teller application, that a, a, an actual GUI or a software, an application-based software solution is loaded on the local PC, and you toggle between that application that drives the recycler and the application that you do your teller work from, so your teller application, the standalone application, and that's how you drive the machine 
and you double key to, to complete transactions within the Teller app. The next is an interface option. This is essentially, again, an application that's loaded at the local level that does either bit mapping or screen scraping or compiler level scraping to ensure that there's a, a, an, an almost entirely seamless interaction between the Teller application and the device itself. Essentially, and we'll go into greater detail here in a moment, it, it creates a seamless experience with only one additional step required at balancing time. And the last piece is the integrated solution. This is where the Teller application itself has an interface written to the device, which we have many, and both the Unilink and Burroughs team can help you specific to your application to determine whether or not there's an integrated option. And the device makes, the, the, the application makes calls directly to the device, and the device responds with command status directly to the application. That's the tightest of the three options. Let's take a minute and just describe those, those, those three options. Again, the first is the standalone option. The, the benefits of, of using a standalone option are, are pretty plain. It's less expensive, there's far less training, it's incredibly quick to deploy, and you can provide additional functionality that the Teller application wasn't built to support. So in other words, you're not paying significant fees to your core provider. You, the, the use of the application is very straightforward, very simple graphical user interface. It merely requires the loading of the software at the local level. And you can do some offline things like cache counting, cache sorting, that today your traditional Teller application wasn't designed to support. The cons or the, the drawbacks from this particular type of implementation is you've essentially got an additional balancing step at the end of the day because the Teller application and the device and the application driving the device don't interact you've got to perform a buy or a sell. If you, and this is the same, we'll talk about this for a moment. This is the one step, this is the one additional step that you have with the uh, interface process as well. If you've taken more cash out of the recycler than you've put in, at the end of the day you must process a one-time buy, essentially a vault buy that teller will process from the vault itself. And if you've put more cash in than you've taken out, you have to do a one-time sell in order to reconcile or balance at the end of the day. The other drawback, the other weakness, is essentially you've got to do a lot of double keying. You're constantly toggling back and forth between the app teller application and the application driving the device. This is still, a, it's a great opportunity or a great strategy if you're going to use this in the back room as an automated vault. And there are plenty of areas where this would still make sense uh, depending upon the, the volume of transactions and the familiarity of your branch with, with using alternative software solutions. The next option is the interface option. Again, much like the standalone, they're less expensive. You're not paying per seat license fees of, of a similar uh, cost that you would with some of your core providers. They're very quick to deploy. They're loaded at the local level. Uh, and you can, again, provide additional functionality from the recycler because not only does it have the ability to sit transparent to the teller in between the applica teller application and the machine and make calls back and forth. In other words, it sits on the operation tray of the, of the, of the local PC and it will, it will act as the seamless or the behind the scenes translator between the hardware and the application, the teller application. But you can pull up a, a separate user interface, a, a standalone graphical user interface that will allow you to do many of the same things you can do in a standalone environment. Use it as an offline cash counter. Use it as a cash sorter. Some of those things, use it to uh, distribute 100 note count Fed straps for, uh, you can then use the machine uh, to actually do your strapping if you, if you do that for commercial clients uh, when you're doing large change orders. And again, you've, the real benefit over standalone is because you've got this middleware, this screen scraping capability, you're only keying amounts one time into the application, and this middleware piece, this interface that's achieved through this software solution will translate that information to and from the hardware seamlessly. The one drawback is, again, that, that balancing step. Now, if at the end of the day, you've got the ability to coach that step with your, with your branch team, this is still a very reasonable option. Again, you, you've taken more cash out, you process a buy, if you've put more cash in, you sell. 
this is a, a very nice option, and we get a lot of folks that have got a lot of value, a lot of incremental value as a result of the additional functionality by using the interface option. And then the last option is the integrated, the integrated solution. Again, no middleware as part of the Teller application. You do a single king of a mouse, and the balancing process, for the most part, is exactly the same as it is today. The cons for the integrated solution tend to be that it's more expensive, it's tied to the system, and so you can have a, a little less flexibility, and in most instances, you lose the loss of some functionality of the recycler, meaning those offline functionalities, those offline functions that we described aren't available when you're directly integrated with the Teller application. Again, the benefit that Unilink and Burroughs provides is flexibility. We've got flexibility in hardware configuration. We've got flexibility in the way that you implement and integrate the solution. And we make it our business to ensure that we don't take a one-size-fits-all approach to implementing or delivering the technology. We work directly with you to ensure that we're using not only the right piece of hardware, the right technology solution, but also the right interface and the right service and support structure, support package, to ensure that you're getting the most out of your machine. So at the end of the day, why Burroughs? And I should say, why Burroughs and why Unilink? Uh, we've got a variety of cash automation options. As, as Stephen mentioned, we've got a variety of front and back counter options. Uh, we, we do everything from uh, ATM, both uh, basic ATM products and solutions to you know, fully function image-enabled ATM solutions that provide an assisted self-service complement to your Teller cash automation strategy, and we even extend into the retail space to do remote cash capture. Essentially, we provide the opportunity for you to address the entire cash ecosystem, the entire check ecosystem. Truly, we take a holistic approach to payment. So, Burroughs and Unilink have been long-term partners, and we think we, we truly bring a differentiated solution to the market. We, we don't start with uh, building a product and asking you to adopt it. In fact, we kind of turn that model on its head. We learn your business, and from there, we help you to design a total solution that meets your specific needs. And that is the entirety of the presentation. I don't, Renee, I don't know if you'd like to, to open the floor for question and answer, or, or Steve, if you'd like to come back on and, and, and add anything to that conclusion. Um, yeah, we really appreciate that uh, you took the time today to to uh, pitch in on the presentation. And right now, um, if any of you have any questions about anything, please feel free. There's a question box um, within the presentation that you can ask some questions, and you know Jeff's here, and we can answer some now. Um, while you're thinking about um, some questions you may have. I want to raffle off a um, Starbucks and a Target gift card for a lucky attendee. And um, it looks like Jennifer Deem, they're going to send you both of those this week. Yay! <laughs> so um, we'll be in touch with you on that. And uh, yeah, if anyone wants a copy of the slides, Feel free to email me. My email address is on the slide, of course, right here. And if you need any other information or have any further questions, feel free to contact us directly. Um, sales at unilinking.com, 1-800-666-2980. Um, yeah, it looks like we don't have any questions coming in. So I don't know. Jeff, um, it sounds like you did a very you thorough did a job. Thorough job today. And uh, I'm sure that uh, our experience is that questions uh, typically will come after the fact. So we'll, what we can do, Jeff, is as those questions come to us via email through our conversations, we'll make sure we forward them over to you. Um, again, we want to thank everybody for taking the time to uh, get on this call. And uh, certainly, oh, uh, oh, we do have a I question have a, coming I have up. A question coming All up. right, here we go. Jeff, you there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, the first question: um, Does the smart cash currency dispenser come in a smaller size? You know, that is the that is the one size product. So we've got uh, that product only comes in the six cassette configuration, three thousand notes per cassette. Okay. 
and we'll wait a couple of seconds to see if uh, any other questions. Oh, we've got another one. Go ahead. Okay. How would you handle commercial petty cash orders? Example, giving one five enrolled coin. That's a great question. You, you know, we, and we've seen this handled a, a few ways. Oftentimes what we've done is we, we encourage customers and we've seen customers use this as a best practice. They keep or retain a piece of small undercounter steel. So they've replaced their giant vault in the back room with something that's, that's smaller footprint uh, that, that supports the idea of using a smaller branch. And then you keep some strap cash to fill change orders. So you've got strap cash in, in this uh, the smaller safe with rolled coin as well. And what they've done, and particularly with the integrated and the standalone, or pardon me, the interface and the standalone software applications, because you've got the ability to run that device offline and you can distribute cash in 100 note increments and quickly strap them and bundle them, that makes the process of creating new Fed straps, new straps for change orders, a lot faster. And you've got an electronic journal there to do that. So great question. Uh, if it depends on volume, once you get over a certain volume, it probably makes sense to retain a piece of a, a smaller safe, an undercounter safe in the back room, or even on the top of certain cases, and use the, the teller cash recycler to populate that with straps when required. Okay. Um, the next question is, do your models have counterfeit, de counterfeit detection? Absolutely, great question. Yeah, we've got a variety of methods. We use not only the image to do uh, detection, but we take a magnetic read. Uh, 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 there's really three or four. So we do infrared, and then we also do a sonic or a, or a test of the build fitness as well. So yes, we do use the latest counterfeit technology or counterfeit detection technology. Okay. Um, just so everybody knows, I'm going to follow up with Jeff um, with some more questions and answers because a few more have been coming in since we started this. Um, and we'll be sending you all a copy of the slides, the recording, and the questions and answers um, in full detail at sometime at the beginning of next week. So Jeff, I just want to thank you again for joining us today. And um, I hope everyone has a great weekend and remainder of their work week. Take care. Thanks a lot.